All right, so I'm working on the Ibanez EDA 900. This is from 2001. And first thing I want to do before I start checking anything out is replace the battery. Now it looks like here that the plastic is still over some of the plastic covers over here. These two have plastic on them still. This one looks like it's been taken off. So let's go ahead and pop this cover off. Get some batteries inside of here. Don't even want to check to see if the battery that's installed inside here is any good or not. Oh yeah, it looks like a kind of an old battery. So this is pretty interesting the way this looks. They did countersink some uh, threaded inserts, which is kind of nice because it uh, keeps you from stripping out screws. So I'm going to get rid of this battery. Procell by Duracell. Hmm, professional alkaline battery. I would put it up against my tongue to see if it's still good, but I'm not going to. So I picked up some batteries today as I ran low with them. Stopped at my music store today and picked up uh, picked up a shitload of guitar strings. And uh, yeah, so Go ahead and plug this in. No corrosion or anything around anything as far as how this looks. Battery locks into place, drops cover down, and put screws in. Yeah, I like these inserts inside these back plates. Make it so much better than having to drive a screw in the wood and remove it, put it in again, remove it, put it in again. Makes it real easy for the guitar to basically um, strip out the wood in the body. All right, so this did come with the owner's manuals, instruction manuals for this thing, so I can learn what the settings on this thing are. But right now, what I want to do is I kind of want to plug this in. I'm not going to worry about tuning it. I'm going to plug this thing in and see what kind of sound I get out of that. So what I'm going to do is grab my uh, zoom for bass, get a patch cord, now the nice thing about these, these zooms is that uh, they also can work with headphones so you don't have to connect them into say you know a, an amplifier or a computer or anything else. So I got input here. Outputs on that side. Plug this in. Get a pair of headphones. Go ahead and plug them into the back here. And Turn this volume down a little bit. All right, so this volume here is for the pickup that's on, yeah, it's for the pickup that's in the bridge. And this is your pickup for right here. Then you have, if I turn this on, turn this on. Sounds really nice. Wow. I've got headphones on, so you're probably not going to hear this at all, but this thing has got some nice output to it. Wow, I like that. I like that a lot. All right, so I'm going to unplug this. I know everything works. Pots don't sound scratchy, which is kind of nice because uh, I'm going to spray a little bit inside of them anyways. Uh, I've got some lubricant and cleaner. Um, they move smooth, 
they feel okay. They don't feel like they're, they're well, 2001, you know, I'm sure they've probably got a little bit of dirt inside of them. So now that I know everything works, as far as that goes, I'm going to go ahead and basically remove these strings. I don't need them. Because <coughs> I've got these. Yeah, these pickups sound nice. I mean, I have another Ibanez guitar that has the Active EQ inside of it, another bass, and uh, I really like the way these sound. I'm going to straighten this neck out with the, see how straight it is as far as the neck straightener goes, clean this thing up, check the electronics on the inside. People say that it doesn't matter if you have string tension on your bass or not, or guitar. I like to remove the string tension. Sorry, it's just how I am. I know it's not going to break the neck or anything else or the headstock, but just sometimes you don't feel like getting hit in the eye with a guitar string. Yeah, this fretboard is kind of dirty. The frets aren't bad at all. Yeah. Overall, this whole guitar, it just feels... This bass feels so different than, than just a regular standard normal bass. The whole look of it and everything else. Let's go ahead and remove this truss rod cover. Truss rod cover still has the plastic on it as well. I don't think this bass was abused in any way. Doesn't seem like it. But I am going to take the plastic off because I don't like leaving these on. The longer you leave these on, the more they kind of become a permanent fixture of whatever they're on. And then trying to peel them off leaves, you know, just some crap behind. So the truss rod on this thing. It is in there. And let's see here. Is it a four mil? Yeah, it's a four mil. Does it turn? Oh yeah, it does turn. She turns. So let's see something. All right, this is for base necks. And let's see what we got here as far as. So we got a little bit of a bed though. A little bit of a backbone in this thing. Alright, so I loosened the nut or the uh, the screw for the truss rod. God damn it, stay on there. Stop falling off. That took care of the back bow. And I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. Let's see if it changes. How much it changes. Alright, that gave me a little bit. So I'll turn that down. Yeah, that's good. All right, so neck is straight. Fret rocker time. Frets aren't bad. Frets aren't bad at all. I 
which is kind of nice. And looking down the sides, it looks like all the frets blend into each other. So between the rocker and then looking at it, she looks good. All right, so I'm going to leave some tools out over here because I'm going to end up reusing these. Let's see here. Yeah, the Ibanez logo. So if I use anything on this body to clean it, I got to be careful around this Ibanez logo. It feels like it's just silk screened on top of the body. That means that uh, any rubbing compounds might remove that, and I don't want to do that. So let's see what's in the back of this thing as far as these back covers go. All right, so this is probably for the piezo. Yep, it kind of looks like it is. Yeah. All right, so I don't want to disrupt anything inside here. Just want to see what is in there. It looks like part of the equalizer is right there. Tuck you back in, get inside there. Now, is this body wood? No, this body is not wood. It's some type of a composite. Oh, good. I can get to the pots from in here. Alright, so everything looks pretty, pretty decent. Nothing looks like it's in bad shape or burned or any type of a problem here. Here's your pickup wire. Here's your main volume for your pickup, your piezo, piezo, whatever you want to call it, and then your two for your equalizer, equalizers. And you have two adjustments here, which I'm not going to change until I look in the book and see exactly what they are. They got this cover shielded. And uh, like I said, I'm going to take these off. If I can get this plastic off. Hopefully this will come off because it feels like it's kind of molded into it a little bit. There you go. Yeah, whatever type of adhesive that they use on these plastic covers, if you leave them on for a long period of time and don't take them off, they can actually ruin ruin the plastic that's underneath it. How do I know this? Because I've had some guitars that have done that. See, kind of like this, it didn't come off very very good so now there's a smudge mark there which will probably come out but I got lucky otherwise that would have been left all over this thing yeah the adhesive will come off that's not a big deal and this guy over here still has its plastic on it as well I don't mind it I know that they do this at the factory to protect you know the plastic and shipping and stuff but problem with it is is that it's not meant to be left on all right so let me get my glasses on and I'm going to check to look at this back board here a little flashlight and what I'm looking for are cracked solder joints either cracked solder joints or dry solder joints there's not much not much on this board to begin with everything looks all right take a look at the wires on the pots they look good too they don't look bad Yeah, everything looks all right. Grounds are okay. Nice. Shit. Weird taking off the glasses. 
Well, while I have this cover open, I want my deoxid clean and lubricates. That's the one I want. Love this stuff. This stuff works really good. And you don't use a lot. Very little goes a long way. So what I want to do is make sure that this thing is set on low. Because there is settings here. You got low, medium, and high. And I want to just put a little bit in each pot. Just like so. And it wouldn't even hurt to put a little bit of this inside of the uh, inside of your switch, your uh, plug. Looks like I got it, should have gotten it. Give these guys a little bit of a turn. Actually turn this thing upside down. Just to get these guys a little bit lubricated and whatever dust that's inside them, out of them. Now these do have a center position and you'll feel it when you turn it. Like right there is center. If I turn it to you, I got a left and then I got a right. And I also want to spray a little bit of this inside of the output jack. So what I am going to do is I am going to remove this bridge here. Now each one of these is a section that's a piece. It's not one piece. So I'm going to remove this. And I'm removing it so I can clean it. It's a little bit difficult to do it while it's on the body. Oh shit, I'm not going to be able to. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. Each one of these pieces here, each one of these saddles is the pickup. And uh, they're wired, so I can't remove this. Alright, so I'm going to have to do it another way then. I'm going to have to put clean them while they're on the body of the guitar. I think those might be a 10 mil. No, a little bit bigger. What do we got here? 12. Smaller than a 12. What? They're standard? Oh, that'd be standard. 7 sixteenths. Yeah, they're standard. Wow, surprise. Torquing these things down, and I'm just giving these things just a little bit of a turn. And I'm watching the threads. If I'm seeing the threads move, then I'm seeing the whole pot move, and these guys aren't moving. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and leave those off. I am going to remove the neck just make it a hell of a lot easier to clean everything that's on this thing yep there was a shim in here piece of wood hmm. all right so here is the composite right here where there's no paint. Pretty cool. Composite body. Doesn't even sound like wood. And I want to make sure that this shim looks like it's been just a piece of wood. Looks like it's been glued in there or it's just stuck. And I'm not going to disrupt it or move it. Fretboard came out. Everything on this thing is, is not bad. No cracking over here. No 
No problems. I'm sure these are probably loose. Yeah, they're loose. That one's tight. Let's see if these rings over here are okay. Sometimes these rings will break. The plastic ones. There is a lock washer inside there which acts as a spring. And then you have the white ring that's inside here. All right. So I've got the guitar in pieces now. Shut this off. Start to clean. All right, so I've got the neck here laid out in front of me, and she is kind of dirty. And this fretboard needs to be oiled. Also, the frets need to be cleaned. So this is made in June of 21. And looks like that the neck is made out of wood, so that is not a composite. So what am I going to use to clean the fretboard with? Well, I'm going to use some Zippo lighter fluid. That sounds pretty good. Make sure I have no cigarettes or anything out. And ooh, looks like I'm not going to use any of the Zippo lighter fluid. It's empty. Okay, so use a little bit of acetone. As long as I don't get any on any on the paint will be good. Make sure I get in there really good in the wood. Yeah, she's kind of dirty. So using the fret erasers, that's done, finished, complete. Now I need to polish these guys up. So I'm going to get my McGuire's polish, a nice clean rag, and my Dremel here. So I'm going to remove the bit that's on here right now. I was using it to work on something else earlier in the week. And I'll go ahead and put this on here. Kind of like the Dremel thing. I know I said before that I really didn't care for it. Actually, it's all I use now for polishing up frets. It works out really, really nice. Now I'll do like five, six, eight frets at a time, just applying this stuff. It's not going to hurt it. But I do want to get this tape off of off this fretboard because I do know that this green tape will leave a residue on the fretboard. All right, so I'm going to make some noise here. You guys can listen to some music. All right, so I put a lot of oil on this fretboard because it was pretty dry. And what I'm gonna do after this soaks in, I'm gonna wipe off the excess. So I'm gonna wait probably like 15, 20 minutes to let this soak in and kind of see where there are some dull spots. If there's some dull spots, that's where it absorbed a lot of the oil. And then I'll reapply some oil uh, if it's still, you know, if it looks like it's still pretty dry. But this thing looked like it was kind of really on the dry side. So I let that soak in there and 
come back and take a look at it. All right, so I think that came out came out pretty good. It's nice not having to do it's nice not having to do any fret work, you know, not having to do any leveling, crowning, and even though I already did the polishing. But so the next thing I want to do right now is I'm going to focus on. Uh, polishing the finish that is on the headstock, the back of the neck, you know, get that all taken care of and uh, get that all taken care of and done. So it's it's pretty nice as is. It's smooth. It's not. Uh, I mean, it's very smooth. They did really really did a nice job on this. I'm not going to remove the tuners, although I am going to polish them a little bit and then I'm going to tighten up whatever screws that are on there. So I'm going to do that right now as far as the screws go. So check out the back of the headstock here and uh, make sure that these guys are tight. Just don't torque them in, but you just want to make sure that they're snug in there, which they were loose a little bit. And then go ahead and flip it over to the other side. Uh, let's see if this is a standard or a metric. And I want to say these things are a standard as well. It's nice to have all your tools up in front over here. That is too small. No, nope, it's a metric. These sides were pretty loose. I'm not torquing them. I'm just snugging them up pretty good. Yeah, even that top one, I couldn't turn it by hand, but it was loose. Alright. Again, you don't want to torque the stuff down, you just want to snug everything up. So, I'm not going to use the cutting cream on this thing for cleaning this uh, the finish because the cutting cream you know this is a matte finish I don't want to bring this to a high gloss I want to just to keep it as a matte finish a couple of clean rags here yes I have I have stock in microfiber cloths in case you're wondering I've got a lot of them And I want to be careful around the logos over here as well. I don't want to remove them. So I got a little bit here on here, maybe just a little bit too much. And all I really want to do is just kind of polish this thing up and move this out of the way. Not so much polish, but clean. Without adding a shine or gloss finish to this. side of the neck heel of it as well so it wasn't too bad as far as being dirty goes go ahead and wipe that off ah good I didn't I didn't give this thing like a high shine to it or you know gloss finish to it because it's very easy to do even with a matte finish you can still polish it up to where it's going to have a gloss to it you don't want that especially for a matte now I did not remove the spacer that's on the back of the neck why because that was on the neck there's a reason for it and it's going to stay there. Clean around everything over here. Again, being careful where these logos are because I don't want to remove them. Straighten out all the tuners so I can get the edge of the headstock really good.
And you want to try not to leave any rubbing compounds or waxes or anything on your guitar. So you want to make sure you get up close all the nooks and crannies because that just looks good. It's like waxing a vehicle and, and leaving a lot of wax on it. You, you don't do that because it just looks like shit. Alright, that's good. Flip it over, check out the headstock top. Take a little bit more. So, I mean, it was a little bit dirty. Came out alright. Didn't lose my logo. Did not put a high gloss finish on it. The way it's supposed to be. Body time. Alright, so I got the neck off to the side over here, and it's time to work on this thing, this body a little bit. And uh, again, I want to be careful not to lose the logo that's over here. But I gotta figure out what am I gonna use to clean maybe some of this. See how this works on the output jack before I apply it to anything else. Then I'll lap just a little bit. See if he'll bring it back a little bit. Can't tell if it's oxidation or if it's just the uh, finishes. The chrome is worn off on it. Be nice if it's just a little oxidation. That way I can clean it up and make it look like new again. so that's that's it not much more I can do with it besides put it back together and do a setup so thanks for watching guys just a little long video of stripping down the new Ibanez base and uh, you know maybe this will help somebody take it easy